what we've found is that, that these um, batteries uh, are actually quite well in balance and very small variations can be made to show up fairly effectively. Our first line of defense is actually a very simple display on our e-vision system. Um, the first place I heard this described was a, a veteran of uh, uh, electric cars for many years, Lee Hart, um, described the circuit some years ago, and, uh, and that's online. You basically take two halves of your pack and put them across uh, an LED, uh, actually a bidirectional LED, and if one uh, voltage exceeds the other, uh, you'll by more than a few tenths of a volt, you'll start to light the LED. Victor with uh, Metric Mind has incorporated kind of a, a more advanced variation of that into the e-vision system. And so we get a bar graph display um, and we tap the pack in the middle and compare each half to each other and it'll be a dead center display if both halves are in balance. If we had one cell go out as little as a few tenths of a volt, um, either in, in acceleration or at rest, this would show up on this display and I can monitor that and, and um, look at it occasionally and tell whether my battery pack is in balance or not. If it um, isn't, while driving the car, I don't need to know which cell has gone bad or which cell's even out of balance. In the event of a cell starting to fail, um, this would show up as an imbalance. And I need to get the car uh, to the house and kind of go into a maintenance mode. Um, in the event um, that we did note an imbalance that way, and that's a quick visual indication that I can glance at driving and tell if, if I've got a battery problem or not. I can't tell which battery. I certainly can't tell which cell. I don't know the voltage of any of them. I know the pack voltage, which doesn't really tell me about a failure. But this balance indication will key me that there is a problem with some of the batteries. Now again, most of the battery monitoring systems have wiring to every cell in the car, each individual cell, so that it can monitor this voltage. And they're computer-based. There's a huge problem with this. Uh, most of these are designed by people in battery companies in laboratories. And they work pretty good there. They're, like I say, tremendous overkill, but they don't work in an electric car. And the reason is uh, they're computerized and they have a whole series, enough wiring to do an electric car, just in running wires to each of these individual cells so they can monitor the voltage. Well, that's like a huge antenna system, and it all works uh, digitally using very low level signals. Well, guess what I've got at the back of the car? The whole purpose of the electric car is to be able to drive, and uh, we've cunningly centered on an electric motor to do that. And an electric motor is basically a huge series of coils of wire that make magnets that react with each other. And in the case of a series DC motor, we actually have a commutator with brushes that ride on segmented bars that change that voltage alternating uh, so that it can keep the motor uh, running. They tend to arc. So with the magnetic field from these coils and the spikes and sparks from that commutator, this car is kind of a radio. Actually, it's a pretty big radio transmitter. It doesn't transmit on any frequencies that you might find disruptive with your AM or FM radio. I haven't had a whole lot of interference from it in the radio, but given enough varying lengths of wire to every cell in the car, I'm going to induce some uh, electromagnetic interference in those lines. And it's almost impossible to, um, uh, you can't prevent the EMI, 
and designing circuits to be resistant to it. I worked for defense contractors for 12 years. We'd spend more time on EMI uh, protection than we would on the original circuit. It's a very uh, difficult um, issue and it's very difficult to test. Um, and so um, in military equipment, you have to have some um, electromagnetic interference, EMI, uh, resistance. Uh, these BMSs do not have it. Uh, these people are designing them in the garage fine, except a car is a very noisy environment for electromagnetic interference. And so a digital system with wires running through the car is going to fail. And you can design uh, uh, chips specifically for this, as TI and um, International Rectifier and a number of people are doing, until you're blue in the face. As long as you've got these digital lines going from battery to battery to battery throughout the car, I'm going to be able to generate, in some situations, enough noise to mess that system up pretty good. And so a digital monitoring system of batteries is just inherently, um, it's not so much a bad idea, it's an expensive idea. You really have to have some um, EMI protection uh, design engineers that are familiar with that and experienced with it. Um, and then how, without having control of the routing of the wires and the length of the wires, I can't imagine how they would do that. Um, it's just not one of those things that you do at home. Um, and so the digital monitoring systems are not appealing to me. Um, we've done some work on little LED bar graphs that display simply a level uh, on the voltage of each battery, not each cell. And we do, at the current time, have wiring in the car to bring those voltages to some terminal strips here at the front of the car. Uh, 